Today, we are back at John Kufleitner's, located just outside of Salem, Ohio, to take a look at this 1970 Lincoln Continental Mark III, which was a car that was requested some time ago, but I'm finally stoked to share this car with you. Like I said, this car was requested. If you guys have any requests of cars that you'd like to see featured on the channel, put it in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to try to find one. For some reason, this is the first Lincoln Continental that I've ever, Mark III, that I've ever been in. They're harder and harder to find. They used to be everywhere, but now they're nowhere. Anyway, if you're out around Salem, Ohio, be sure to check out John Kufleitner's. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Tell them Jay, YouTube car guy, sent you. That's me. I'm Jay. Welcome to what it's like. If you're new to the channel, you have hit the gold mine. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds like a channel worth watching, subscribe. Hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick, before getting into today's featured car, if you need to get a hold of me for any reason at all, if you want to just talk, I love talking to people, I love sharing stories, shoot me a comment in the comment section. I read every single one of my comments and try to respond to all of them. It's me, not a computer, not a secretary, and it will always be that way. The other way is we recently made a Facebook What It's Like group that correlates with this channel, but it also gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, and experiences. Also, if you want to share other YouTube car-related links, go for it. The goal is to, make, to keep this information alive and well so these cars remain running and on the road. Some admins, for whatever reason, are jerks, and they don't want the younger generations to know this stuff, which is beyond me. Anyway, link in the description if that's something you want to check out. Once again, it, you're not obligated to, just there if you want. Bringing back an icon. As the story goes, our boy, Lee Iacocca, was Ford Vice President of the Car and Truck Division at the time, and he directed Design Vice President to put a Rolls-Royce grill on a Thunderbird because the Thunderbird sales began to slump. The Mark III was built on the same platform as the Thunderbird. They were built basically side by side to one another in the same factory in Michigan. You also have to understand that in the 60s, Lincoln didn't really have a flagship model. Yes, they had the Continental four-door convertible, but they didn't have the Mark series. The Mark series ended in 1960 with the Mark V, and that's where things get kind of confusing with the lineage of this because it the last one that was built was the Mark V in 1960. Mark III was 1958, but this car doesn't share the lineage with those three cars. This car picks up where the Continental II left off. The Mark III was aimed straight at the Cadillac Eldorado, which was a completely redesigned, and it shared the platform with the Oldsmobile Tornado. They were both front-wheel drive, whereas the Lincoln was rear-wheel drive. It was actually, the Lincoln Mark III was actually introduced in 1968 as an early 69 model year and was a huge commercial success and outsold the Cadillac Eldorado in the very first year. The Mark III changed everything, not just for Lincoln, but also for the Mercury brand as well. Both of those brands were losing money. They weren't really hemorrhaging money, but they weren't making it very profitable. Iacocca polished those just as he did, just with just about everything that guy touched turned to gold. He transformed both Lincoln and Mercury into brands from losing money to making money hand over fist. Let's talk 1970 Lincoln lineup. Lincoln offered two models, the Continental, which was offered as a four-door and a two-door. At the top was the Mark III, but it also incorporated Continental in there. So it was called the Lincoln Continental Mark III. The Mark III is the genesis or the design concept that will be improved upon for years to come, all the way out to the Mark VI. One could argue the LSC even though the LSC is the Fox body platform shared with the Mustang, whereas the Mark III shares the platform with the Thunderbird. Anyway, let's move on to some specs. 117.2 inches long is the wheelbase. 216.1 inches is the total overall length. It is 79.4 inches wide, 53 inches tall, weighs 4,866 pounds. Price. The price in 1970 was $7,281. That's base price. 
And that would be equivalent to you spending $54,850.70 in the year 2022. Total 1970 Lincoln production was 59,127 units, of which 21,432 were the Mark III. This car could go 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. Top speed was, I've seen two different figures. One, one figure said, one source said 124.3 miles per hour with another source saying 132 miles per hour. This thing could get around 9.3 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the engine. 460 cubic inch displacement V8, 7.5 liters. One could say this Lincoln was a hot rod Lincoln. One could make the argument for the LSC2, but this one made 365 horsepower at 4,600 RPM with a bore of 4.36 inches and a stroke of 3.85 inches. Compression was 10.5 to 1. Fed with a four barrel carburetor with four Venturi. Cast iron block slash crankcase. Transmission used a three-speed C6, also known as Select Shift Automatic. Okay, let's talk about this door panel. Just look at how big this door is. This door is very heavy. It feels very quality. There's a lot of different materials going on. Up here, it's nicely padded, and then it has wood and chrome. This is the door handle to shut the door. Or you could use this pocket here. This is the door handle to get out. You just squeeze it like this. Let's start up here. So this controls the mirror. Move it. That's what how that works. These switches control the seats. This controls the left front mirror. This controls the right front mirror. This controls the left rear mirror. This controls the right rear mirror. This one unlocks and or locks the windows, and this one unlocks or locks the doors. And notice the reflectors you have here. This looks like a speaker, and this feels like aluminum or, yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like aluminum. Down here, it's nicely carpeted. Lots of, look at how many different materials that was. You got this material here, and then a carpet material, aluminum, wood, some probably stainless. Lots of different materials used. I want to show you how this door operates. It's very interesting. So notice this is a wheel and it spins as the door is opening and closing. It's very smooth operation in how this door works. There's no hiccups like some of the cars that you feature have some hiccups along the way. There are no hiccups with this door. Big hinge here. This is for all the electronics and then it's got another hinge down here. The window is completely trimmed out and it's got this nice gasket here with chrome on top of it to make it watertight. Notice this doesn't have vent windows like the later Lincolns do. And just check out the shape of that window. And that's what that looks like. Here's first person impression of what this looks like when you're sitting behind the wheel of this car. Absolutely love the dashboard design. Over the hood impression, that's what it looks like. To me, it would look better if it had a hood ornament at the end, but I totally understand why it's not there. And notice where my knees are in reference to the dashboard. They're nowhere near touching the dashboard. This is what I look like. There's adequate headroom. There's lots, this, this car is really wide. There's lots of room. There's enough space for three adults in the front, no issues. There's probably enough space in the back for three teenagers or three 70s adults. People gotten bigger. If you're smaller, I think, I think if you're around like five foot nine or whatever, you could fit back there perfect. I fit back there, but I wouldn't want to be back there, say, like going from here to Georgia, but it's it's comfortable. The washer, you push for the washer, and it squirts on there like that. And check out these windshield wipers. They're the smallest windshield wipers. Considering the car is as massive as it is, those are the windshield wipers. And then they go back up underneath when they retract in. They sit down inside here. They don't sit on top of the windshield. I 
keep hitting the horn. The horn works really good. It's a very nice masculine horn. Here's the headlights. Notice the temperature climate controls are all driver focused. So if you have a miss in the car, she can't have control over it unless she's operating the car. Actually, all the switches are very much driver oriented. The radio is over here as well. There's nothing over there for the passenger to really get into except for the glove box, yeah. which is right down here. And this car comes with the original 1970 owner's manual as well as some other various pieces of literature. Also, these windows back here go down. They actually go inside. Just check this out. So I'm pushing the button. That is super cool. I never saw that. This actually might be my favorite Lincoln that I've ever been in. This locks and unlocks the seat backs. This one, that one controls the power antenna and it works. Up here for the mirrors, there's no courtesy mirror on this one. There is a courtesy mirror on this one. Here's the mirror. It's a daytime runtime mirror. And up here you have a bunch of warning lights, seat belts, door ajar, headlamps, trunk open. Coming back to the stereo, this controls the tuner and this turns it on. Engine direct support staff. You got actual air vents, 1970. I wonder when they started putting air vents that aimed right that were on the panel itself instead of at the top and bottom. Like most old cars don't have vents here or up here. Passenger side has different controls on it as well. It's a power seat. These are these control the seat. This one does, this one does, and this one does. This one here is unlock and lock the doors, and this one over here is for the windows. And this is an ashtray. Cigarette lighter is located right down here. It's a pull-out type with another ashtray, and this is the cigarette lighter itself. That's what it looks like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting with the speed button that sits in the foreground of the oil and fuel gauge. But I think that this is for cruise control. I couldn't find any literature on it. So in the comment section below, please. And then just behind it is the oil pressure as well as the fuel gauge. There are five pods that sit in front of the driver. We already talked about one. The, the pod that's next to this one is the speedometer. And the speedometer goes up to 120 miles per hour in this car odometer at the bottom and just notice that all of these gauges are square right in the center here that is where your turn signal indicators are left and right turn signal indicators and then right below it would be the high beam warning light that the high beams on right next to it is a beautiful square cartier clock the last gauge is for the wipers in the washer feature coming back to check out the steering wheel notice the three spoke design has a simulated wood it might be real wood in the middle i don't think it is but it looks really nice it almost looks very pontiac this steering wheel in the comments section below what do you think off to the side here there is a button on the end of the stick a lot of times that's where cruise control is that's why the speed light thing threw me off because i would bet the farm that that's how you would engage cruise control but i'm not entirely sure on top of the steering wheel column, all the drive select modes, park, reverse, neutral, drive, second, and first. Ignition switch is located just to the right of the steering wheel. It's on the steering wheel column, but it's on the right-hand side. And I don't have no idea why this guy kept all these keys, but only two keys work for the whole entire car. So I don't know if he was like a Lincoln man and he just collected all these keys over time and just never got rid of any of these keys. But only two of these keys out of this whole mess of keys work. Moving just down from that, that little tiny button that protrudes out of the almost the bottom of the steering wheel, that is for the hazard lights. So just check out these keys. I had an 88 Lincoln town car. These are almost the same exact keys as the town car keys. And it's very reminiscent because I remember pulling out keys like this all the time and going in my Lincoln and having a good time. And it brings back a lot of memories. And that's why this channel exists, to bring back memories and to get younger people into this. Car hobbies for everyone. 
just check out this interior. Look at how nice it is. There's no rips or tears that I see. Armrest for the passenger, armrest for the driver, both in really excellent condition. Check out the way that this headrest is designed. It's on like a monopod, it's all chromed out. Look at how that looks. All right, on to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's the glove box. I don't know if it's going to fit. It's not a very big glove box. Nope, it's not gonna fit in there. But guess what? That doesn't mean that it's an inadequate car because this massive camera doesn't fit inside the glove box. I just like showing how small something looks on the outside could actually be really big on the inside. This is where the seat belts are. They retract into the floor. Well, not into the floor. They retract into this thing, which is mounted to the floor. Getting inside, getting in the back. You know, I'm six foot tall, so there isn't a whole lot of room back here. But seating position isn't, my head's kind of, my hair's touching the top, but it's not that bad. It smells great. It looks great. You, the leather, it all smells great. Uh, look at the amenities you have slash space. There isn't a whole lot of space in this rear seat considering how big this car is. These are ashtrays as well as cigarette lighters. Back here, there's a light and a window switch. The light is located right there. Same thing on this side. Cigarette lighter here, ashtray there. This controls the light switch, which is right here. And this controls the window, which is right here. So getting into the trunk access, just slide this out of the way. Keyhole covers is a lost art. It really is. And then with these, Lincoln gives you two sets of keys. This, this one usually, the square key is for the ignition. The round keys is for the door and the trunk. Check out that massive trunk. Lincoln Hallmark Cadillac and Chrysler too, but if you're a Lincoln guy, Lincoln owner, this is very familiar. Even the carpeting used, they never changed it. It was the same in the 80s as it is in the 60s. Or this is a 70. But full size spare up here. Notice it has a nice bracket to hold it in place so it doesn't move anywhere. And the tire jack's probably up there too. It's a bumper jack. All right, so coming up to under the hood. Now notice. This one's a little harder to find because you can't really fit your hands in here. It's not really down in here. Where is it at? Oh, it's right here. And then when you pop it up, the catch goes opposite in which you think it goes. So instead of it pulling up, it down. This is the catch that you push down instead of up and this is what it catches on. Just check out this engine. 460 cubic inches with a four Venturi carburetor. It's got power brakes, dual master cylinder, massive AC compressor. Power steering pumps down inside there. If you guys made it this far, congratulations for making it this far. This is probably going to be the longest video to date, minus the Gilmore Auto Museum video. Somebody in the comment section said to make longer videos, so this was an attempt at that. I listened to everybody's feedback, and I just wanted to try something new. I think that this is one of the better videos that we've done for the channel so far. Put in the comment section below, what did you guys think of this video? But don't go anywhere. We still have Name That Tune. We still have to do pros and cons, and I got to drive this car, so I'm going to tell you what I think. So we're going on to the pros and cons. I'm getting all these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the Auto Editors of Consumer Guide. 
On the positive side, crisp, traditional styling, elegance, and luxury. Smooth, long-haul road car, a milestone car. Values soared during the 1980s. Against it, values soared during the 80s. It's thirsty, expensive to restore, so fine, clean ones are hard to find. I will say, this car is for sale at John Kufleitner's Gallery of Classic and Vintage Cars, and it is in excellent shape. The interior is perfect. I didn't see any rust on this car whatsoever. I did get to drive this car, and let me tell you, it is everything that I remember a Lincoln to be. It's very, it's a floaty ride, but it's luxurious in the sense that you can hit all those rumble strips on the side of the road and really not feel it, because it, you feel so isolated, but not isolated at the same time. And it's the honestly the most powerful Lincoln that I ever drove. The guy that was driving while I was videoing it, I told him, I said, if there was ever a hot rod Lincoln, this would be it. And he didn't totally believe me. And he hit the gas and he his jaw almost hit the floor. He's like, this is incredible. He could not believe how much balls, for a lack of a better term, this car had. Don't get me wrong. It's a big, heavy, thirsty car but it doesn't feel nearly as heavy as other things out there. Also, it's got power brakes, which are really nice. It's also got power steering, and sometimes a lot of people will say the power steering is vague, but if you drive a lot of these big boat-like cars, it gets really easy to handle. Also, you can't go around a bend going 80 miles an hour in this thing because it weighs a lot and it's on soft springs, and it'll tend to lean. But knowing all those things, if you drive it like a civilized person, it's a really great car. I'm really impressed. This has hit the top of my Lincoln list. This is my favorite Lincoln. And that's saying a lot because I was a huge, I still am, I'm a huge Lincoln Mark V fan. But the quality of materials in this car is, it's just mind-blowing how far the quality dropped especially in the 80s because you couldn't even put your hand on that armrest on the door panel without it flaking and falling apart. There's none of that with this. Okay, on to name that tune. First person to give me the correct name of the group, band, or individual. I don't care if the band broke up and you just give me, like the last one was uh, Sherry by the Four Seasons or Frankie Valley. That's fine too. First person to get both of those right will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. I love that song. That song's so great, and I think this car is so fitting because it's considered, I'm using air quotes even though you can't see me, Yacht Rock. All right, thank you all so much for watching. If you could, please give this video a like if you dig the content. If you like this, the way that this video was formatted, just let me know in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!